it just seems unfathomable that an entire app that's used by a hundred million users across America, and that's only America, not across the entire world, would have the possibility of being banned. That's insane. However, my mom sends me so many news articles and I read about it so much and people just like, the news, y'all, the news, they just be saying like it's coming tomorrow. We're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. In less than a year, you have almost 35 million followers on TikTok. It's one of the most popular social media apps out there. My name is Duchess C, my at is Duchess.C, and I am a comedian slash mic yeller. Hello, my name is Sean Satariadana from Shonda's Magic, and I make comedy and math videos. Hey, I'm Alan Chicken Chow, my at is Alan Chicken Chow, and I make comedy videos. Hello, my name is Clotilda, my at is Clotilda Demaro, and I'm all about self-love, baby, and storytelling. Hi, my name is Ashley, my username is Pythian Priestess, and I frequent witch talk and occult talk. Hi, I'm Eli, uh, my at is a great Danes. I'm a bathroom mantra on TikTok. Hey guys, I'm Kara, at Kind of a Quad, you can find me on the crippled side of TikTok. I am nervous about a potential TikTok ban. The first TikTok gear ban or whatever, I went on live or whatever. I was like, I was crying. I was like, oh my gosh, I love you guys so much. I was like, I want to miss you guys. Follow my Instagram. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I was, I was bawling. It is so embarrassing because my friend took like screenshots of me crying and stuff like that. It was so bad. But at that point in time is when I was like first growing fast. Like I was growing fast and I was like kind of nervous because I was like, damn, I put in all this hard work just for it to be taken away. Yeah, my first reaction too, I like took to TikTok and I like, it was almost, I put my bootstraps on and I was like, they cannot take us down, you guys. They will not touch us. I went in for a second and I don't know, what I kind of realized is with our brands, especially people have developed an emotional connection with us enough that they'll find us afterwards. Also, where, where these thoughts, words, ideas come from, they can't just die. For me, uh, first and foremost, I honestly have a lot of faith in TikTok. I think that they're, you know, actively working hard. I mean, they're not going to just let go of this gigantic app, you know. If TikTok goes away today, like, I feel I feel confident, not, you know, just myself, but like all of us, we're going to find a platform somewhere else and we're going to thrive in that platform. So that's why I don't I don't really feel like any nervousness or pressure. My professional answer is that I completely agree with that. I think conceptually, like, there is no basis for this ban to go through. TikTok is, like, a hu huge tech company. It just seems unfathomable that an entire app that's used by 100 million users across America, and that's only America, not across the entire world, would have the possibility of being banned. That's insane. However, my mom sends me so many news articles and I read about it so much and people just like, the news, y'all, the news, they just be saying like it's coming tomorrow. And I'm like, oh my God, like my apartment is gonna be gone if this, like, no. <laughs> I spent seven years in the Air Force and a big thing that we all have to do is we have like requirements for security and stuff like that. The big tell for me is that TikTok is banned on government devices, not personal devices for the military members. So if it was really that big of a security risk, they would have had a ban on it for personal use as well. We have things that are blacklisted every day when they have actual evidence behind them. And if they're not banned, if we're still making TikToks on deployment, we're still doing it here and there, I don't see where the substantial evidence is. Anyone can get TikTok famous. I feel like it's easy to go viral, but to like maintain a fan base, they gotta really match your energy. They gotta fuck with you. If they're not fucking with you, then you just not finna keep getting views. Like it's just not gonna happen. I think that it was a lot easier when we, that before the algorithm change. One, they look for the first three seconds movement. And if you don't move, you're not gonna get on FYP page. Your lighting is incredibly important, as well as like being able to engage your audience. So the way that the TikTok algorithm decides whether or not your video will continue to get views, it's only through rewatch now, not through likes, not through comments, and not through shares. 
I also feel like it's kind of relative. Um, I, I feel like in terms of like TikTok fame, because like no one's ch- touching like Charlie D'Amelio, like that upper like one percent. Like I think like it, you know what I mean, like a couple hundred thousand people that like really rock with you um, is manageable. And I also feel like it, like I I completely agree with you. Like it is a thousand percent about authenticity. But because of that, anyone, literally anyone, can get TikTok famous. If you have like a niche, if there's something you're passionate about. Um, TikTok has an audience for it, and I feel like that's what's different compared to any other platform. If you compare to YouTube, it's so hard to grow on YouTube. So hard, you know, even Instagram, like there's not very much organic growth. But I mean, like TikTok, you post one video, you'll, you could get 100,000 followers. My attractiveness plays a role in my success. The years I spent trying to be someone I wasn't on Instagram and doing my makeup up and all of those things, it wasn't until I said like, fuck it. So I took off the makeup and now I just don't give a fuck. Like, and that, those were the videos that first started popping off. It is a component that can help creators. I mean, there are, you know, girls and guys who, you know, thirst trap and literally just stand in front of a camera and can get millions of views. Um, Not my case, but (laughs) if I didn't have my personality, nor, nor my own like um, my own talent. I wouldn't be in the position I am today. So. I, I think it does help. Like if if your intention is to be like a thirst trapper, which by the way is like a very viable option for many people, and like you can have success. I mean, even outside of TikTok, like there are celebrities, like actors and singers, who literally sell that. That is like all they are. So it is a big selling point if you, if you want to go that avenue. I think looking different. Um takes a big role on it because like I look pretty normal right now but I had like green hair and then I had pink and I had blue and red and all types of colors and that kind of drew attention towards me like matching your hair with your eyebrows and like you get more compliments which gets people to see your videos and like start liking you because you're different so I think if you don't look like other people or you have your own type of style to yourself that's different then that definitely plays a role too. I totally agree with you I think that there's been like a big movement if you look different like like there's mid-sized TikTok, which is what I'm a part of. I am not average size. I'm not plus size. But people being able to see my very small five foot compact body is what they like to see because it reminds them of like everyone is different. That does add to your attraction is like, you know, what I mean? your personality. Attraction isn't all looks. I think attraction is kind of like the whole package. And, and yeah, it definitely like all, all Attraction is literally what attracts you to somebody. Like it could be anything, they could smell nice and it would be an attractive thing. I can fully support myself with money I make off TikTok. I personally don't make a lot of money through the app, but I do, I'm able to funnel customers and clients through TikTok, but I don't make money through TikTok. The creator fund for me, um, I've only made like $20 off of it. So all of my support does not come from the internet. I actually have two regular jobs as well. I'm nowhere close to supporting myself fully off of TikTok. Um, I, I, I made a couple of bucks off of the TikTok creator fund, but then my views also started to like dip. I don't know if that was then just like tuning it or whatnot, or if it's because like now we're paying you per view, your content has to be like top tier. I think you could ultimately end up supporting yourself through other avenues, like starting your own business. I think if I like dedicated myself to doing that, then I could make it happen some way, shape or form. But I'm like really helping people at the capacity that I am right now then I'm, I'm, I'm personally, emotionally, like I'm thriving. I live with my sister, so I don't pay rent, so I don't have to worry about rent. But like, if I, I do have a job, I work at Target, but if I didn't work there, I feel like I could like get the stuff that I need and stuff like that, because I do like get brand deals and stuff like that. Like this wig is a promotion wig, it was free. I don't have that many things that I need though. Like I'm not living by myself. I don't pay for my car. So it's like, in my lifestyle, what I do need, I could. I did like make the leap of quitting my full-time job, going without money for like three months in order to be able to actually now, like literally now, <laughs> be able to like, like um, to sustain myself. It's definitely crazy to be able to do it, um, but yeah, I- I'm grateful for the for you know the the freedom. I'm in like a really interesting boat because I started TikTok last year and I was um, you know a junior in high school, so I just graduated this year. Um, high school. So I've actually never had like a quote unquote real job. Um, 
besides, you know, like social media or whatever, anything. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, this year that I actually started to, you know, make money. And um, it was, you know, through the live streams, through brand deals, through um, branded opportunities. Um, and, you know, now I'm able to, you know, I moved out <laughs> and I have my own place now and uh, all, all through TikTok. So I'm very blessed. I'm very grateful for everything. The TikTok community feels safe. Who's accidentally ended up on a porn site? I've had like multiple videos that have been taken off of multiple social media platforms that people then go and upload to Pornhub or X videos. I'm fully clothed. I don't really ever do things in like a sports bar or a bikini or whatever. It's just not my thing. But yeah. How did you find them? Um, I had a follower of mine who <laughs> messaged it to me and they're like, hey, um, you know you're on Pornhub and I was like I am and they're like yeah you've got like a hundred percent rating right now and I was like what where's my cut like where's my money come on so um yeah I accidentally became a porn star the for you page it's very particular to you you know you're you're rarely gonna find a video that you strongly disagree with with that the comments and all of the you know kind of the the community and the vibe going around is like you know it's gonna be relatively the same as yours um, and I compare that to like when IG, uh, sorry, Instagram released IG uh, Reels. When they released Reels, like I was looking through the comments and they're just way harsher so, than. Oh, oh, so, much. so much. Oh my gosh. It, it's yeah, so was, much, was, like was, just compared to um, to TikTok. So um, in that in that respect, um, yeah, I feel like it is you know somewhat somewhat pretty safe. Um, there are definitely instances where you know like we've we've seen like with a lot of drama and stuff where it can get really toxic and. Um, like, you know, not the best space for, for users, influencers, and, you know, just like the kids in general who consume this content. But in, in general, I think, I think TikTok has done a pretty, pretty decent job on uh, keeping a safe community. I've experienced both a lot of negativity and a lot of positivity. Somehow one of my videos um, ended up on straight TikTok and I got body shamed really hard. And I was like, this is not what I'm used to. I also, as a, a spiritual minority, I get a lot of hate. I get a lot of clown emojis. Uh, I get called a psychopath. I've been called mentally ill. Um, so I actually use comment blockers now to make sure that that kind of stuff doesn't um, filter through, especially because I work really hard to try to keep a safe space for people who are curious about spirituality. And they don't need to see people who who are gonna put you down for self-exploration. I feel in competition with other creators. I'm like a comedian, a mic yeller, I do all this like funny stuff. So there's so many people who do what I do and it's like crazy. And like a specific TikToker, he wanted to like block me and call me out for stealing his content when I never saw him in my entire life. And like we even talked about it and he still posted our stuff about me. So I was just like, okay. So I felt like at some point I was competing with him because we were doing the same thing and our followers were like picking sides, choosing. So that that's like the personal experience I had. Spirituality is not a competition. So in that way, I think my niche of TikTok uh, is a little bit less competitive, but maybe not necessarily not dramatic. <laughs> the witch talk community has this awful reputation being called witch toxic because there's a lot of infighting and it really hurts to see people who try to attack each other over something like personal beliefs. Uh, I think that that's really silly. I also would like to say that not every person is going to like everybody and that's okay. So if I if I never act on the people that I dislike, I simply block and move on. I personally believe that, you know, there's so much opportunity in this world for everybody. So like, um, you know, just because someone else succeeds or is doing well doesn't mean, you know, you can't either. So I don't ever see it as like, you know, a competition. It's, you know, it's my own personal gain. And if someone else is doing well, all power to you. You know, good job, that's all you, and there's so much more opportunity for everybody else. I think my content makes a difference in people's lives. I get a lot of messages from like parents of little kids 
that just broke their back or just broke their neck or they were born with CP and they're like going through their school years. They didn't want to do this, they didn't want to do that and they saw me driving my truck with hand controls and they're like, mommy, I want to drive a truck like that. I thought I could only have a minivan. I'm able to like show them a whole new world that a lot of people don't think could even exist. The fan pages I have or like the DMs or like the um, comments on TikTok, they really do mean a lot. I just wanted to say I love you so much. You brighten my day. Like hearing them physically say that is just something different. Seeing the things I've struggled with and maybe me not speaking directly on them, but maybe the energy or just collectively the things I'm saying adding up and then it translating with people. One of the things I've kind of always dealt with in the last, like, you know, throughout my journey and self-love and eating disorders and all of this stuff is like looking in the mirror. And that was always a really big thing for me that just in seeing a super distorted version of myself. Um, and I got a video from a girl not too long ago and it was her speaking. So like Duchess C said about he really hearing it. That's so different. This girl said that she stared in her, she stared at herself in the mirror for 30 minutes and saw how beautiful she was after watching my videos. It's perfect. I'm so happy with what I, with, I don't know if TikTok were to go tomorrow or whatever happens. I'm so happy to be where I'm at and, and be doing what I'm doing. I'm excited to go make a video. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I'm getting a live after this.